Hey, what is up, YouTube? I'm back again with another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a gas mask. It is not a U.S. gas mask. It's a Chinese um, M64A gas mask. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. So <clears throat> let's start with the carrier. You may notice that it's the early style carrier um, with like rubber and then canvas and then it's just a plastic dot that you pull to open the carrier. Um, you can see a shoulder strap, the waist strap. The D-ring on the waist strap is elastic, so that's kind of nice. You can see the tag that was on it when I bought it. We'll get into this accessory once we take open up the, the bag. And we'll get into this too, these air vents. So let's open it. You just pull these open like so. Really neat feature. I don't think that's on most gas masks that I've ever seen before. Um, but that's kind of cool. So opening it, you can see you have the filter. And then here's that round case. Inside of this, which I won't pull it out because it's really hard to um, put in, and you can see that it's still sealed anyways, is the anti-fog lenses. Basically thin sheets of plastic that would go inside the eye lenses um, to prevent fogging in colder environments. So let's pull out the mask. And... Here's the mask with a hose. I think this is about maybe two feet hose. And you can see the round eye lenses, the voice diaphragm, the exhale valve. Now, like I mentioned, this is the M64A. Um, they, the Chinese started using these in 1964. Um, what makes this the A model is this, the voice diaphragm and exhale valve assembly. Um, the A models like this are clear plastic and not quite um, as strong and then later on they change it to a gray plastic where it looked a little bit different and it was closer to this color of gray. <clears throat> you can see that it's a five-point head harness and another tag on there. And there is the only stamp on this mask, which I do believe that is a size indicator. So that must mean that this is either a size medium, would be my guess. And you can see on the head harness that this is like rubber, and then on the inside it's like a canvas-like material. I'll try and get you guys a shot of the inside of the mask here. It's a very basic design. You can see the uh, voice diaphragm, the secondary exhale valve, and then these vents on each side of the face piece on the inside next to the eye lenses are air deflectors so that when you breathe in, air is evenly distributed across the face piece and it prevents fogging. And then I'll show you the filter. So. This was designed to be worn over your shoulder like this and just have the mask on so the uh, filter would stay in the carrier and it has this pocket for the filter and that will allow air to go into the bottom of the carrier so that you could breathe. Here's the filter. This is the Type uh, 111 and it looks like this one was manufactured in February of 76. Now the M64A was uh, produced, like I said, from 1964 all the way up until about the late 1970s. So this is a later style filter. It does look very similar to the Soviet coffee can filter. Um, it is a little bit smaller, but it's got the same color to it these filters do contain asbestos so um, basically as long as they're not dented or cut open they're fine for the most part but I still wouldn't recommend uh, wearing them so 
that's why I'm leaving the cap on the filters. Um, just like the Russian or the Soviet filters, like this one, the GP5 filter, these do contain asbestos as well. Again, as long as they're not dented or cut open, they're perfectly safe, but I still wouldn't recommend using them. Um, if you're dead set on using Russian uh, filters, I would recommend the modern Gost filters. Um, those ones are safe, they're good for Soviet masks, uh, but basically any filter made within the last 10 years I would say is safe, uh, but kinds like these are a no-go, just for collection purposes only. <clears throat> so now that the filter is out of there, I'll give you guys a shot of the inside of the bag. It's very plain, it's very basic. You can see the cotton pouch with elastic for the filter and then the anti-fog uh, lenses pocket. I'll go ahead and throw the mask on to show you guys how it looks. It's made out of the very similar rubber to the Russian GP5. And you can hear the exhale valve there. But let's see if it passes the seal check. And it does. So this gas mask does seal properly. Fogs up a little bit. And you can hear the exhale valve and you can hear the voice diaphragm. Isn't too bad actually for a cheaper Chinese gas mask. The hose is permanently attached and you can see that the filter just screws on there. So what makes this particular gas mask so important, at least important to me, is that this, I purchased this from the one and only Firebird JP. If you guys remember Firebird JP from about 10 years ago, in my opinion, he was the grandfather of gas mask reviews on YouTube. Um, he started out I want to say in early 2011 uploading videos um, he's retired now but just the other day he made an ad on the gas mask uh, auction house on Facebook selling off what he had and this is one of the items I picked up so it's very very cool um, I know a lot of people have a similar story but he did kind of get me into gas mask collecting um, I had been following him since before he uploaded his first M17 gas mask video. Um, so he, like the, a lot of people, um, he definitely had a huge impact on me in collecting gas masks. So this is pretty cool to own a piece of YouTube history in my opinion. Um, so anyways guys, that's going to wrap it up for this one. I hope you guys learned something new. If you guys have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them in the comments below. And as always, have a nice day.